Okay. Yes. Well, basically, the company is called Image Matters Asia, and I work with、um, senior executives and entrepreneurs.、Um, this class is called Movement in Communication. Basically, I、um, I study movement,、um, adults' movement as well as children's Children. movement, which I will I will get into a bit later. So, movement in communication is about how we move as we are presenting. Or you know,、um, conducting speeches and all that.、Um, let's get into it later. But let me just first explain、um, a little bit about me. Give you a bit of、uh, details about myself. I'm a Thai. I was、um, born in Munich, Germany. I've lived I in. Your... Okay. Before you do that, we would love to. Your... I can't hear you, Michael. That's all right. That's all right.、Uh... I was just saying, if you could give us the opportunity to give you a warm welcome, put our hands together, everybody. Sure. <laughs> okay. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So you can continue now. Okay. Well, basically, like I said, I was born. I was born in Germany. I've lived in、um, four different countries, and I've worked in eleven、uh, different countries. Currently, I work. I, I'm based in Bangkok, Thailand, but、um, I. Go back to、uh, the UK three times a year because I'm also in partnership with a Butler School,、um, and so yeah, I do the nonverbal communication side for them. And、um, before starting Image Matters, I was a headhunter. So basically, my job was about interviewing people,、um, getting jobs for people, and filling you know jobs、uh, vacancies with people. And、um, after that, I decided that I wanted to get into training because I wanted to teach people how to—I、um, don't want to say behave, but how to be professional when they go into job meetings or job interviews. So yeah, that's、um, then I started Image Matters. The first three years, I worked on、um, grooming and appearance. So I was teaching senior executives on what to wear and、um, how to, you know, how to come across as professional. And then I got into、um, nonverbal communication, which I've been doing since then until now. And、um, my education, I have a PhD in psychology、um, from England. The rest is very long, but after my PhD, I also did another eight years of、um, movement studies in Japan, in England, in、um, <laughs> in the States. So basically, if you look at my CV now. It's all about movement studies. One other thing I did, which、um, was purely from my interest in nonverbal communication, was lie detection. So you can see here, evaluating truth and credibility or lie detection. That was in Manchester in England. I was I, actually I've I've always been very interested in why we do what we do, and to study nonverbal communication. Um, lie detection is a good way of understanding how the body and the mind、um, sort of work together. So、um, I wouldn't call myself a lie detector, but I do、um, classes on reading people and teaching people how to read other people as well. So I would say, let's say、um, students ask me all the time.、Um, so does this mean you're always, you know, looking at people? Actually, I don't. I don't. I don't pay that much attention unless you know you do something that's that's just you know that that sort of catches my attention. Yeah. So that would be my lie detection, and then I also did、um, facial action coding systems, which is about muscle groups in our faces. And、um, basically, if you look at your mobile phones now, this is the the um, the um, system that is used a lot in mobile phones in security. In you know, in cameras and things like that. So that's um, yeah, facial action coding system. And I find it very useful when I teach people about facial expressions or how to detect、um, facial expressions or how to use、um, the right facial expressions when they、um, interacting with people. And the rest are just、um, you know, this is my work with with、um, the school in England. I was、um, certified.、Um, And、um, yeah, with the Butler School in England, I work with、uh, a Butler called Rick Fink, who's now eighty-eight. 
So whenever I go back to the Butler School, Rick teaches about services and I teach about nonverbal communication. And um, yeah, I did um, my first body language, official body language class was with Mike Carter. And he was, um, I, I'm sure he still is, actually, he's, he's based in Brighton in England. And that was, you know, how I started looking into body language. And um, yeah, I did some short courses on um, coaching, which I, um, you know, I, I don't really like coaching. So I, I didn't really pursue it. And that's it. That would be me. Okay, so since we have such limited time, um, let me just dive right in, right in, if that's okay with you, Michael. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, everybody can hear me well, right? Yeah, we can hear you great. Um, and I know that it might be difficult to hear me and to hear us, but we can definitely hear you perfectly. Okay. Okay. Very good. So when we present, you know, people often, um, let's say a lot of courses about presentation, would focus on the presentation slides, how you prepare your present, uh, presentation slides, where you're going to stand, things like that, like very, very um, limited. What we do is called movement in communication. As you know, we focus on how one moves um, because let's just say um, in communication, 80% of communication is nonverbal. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this, but you probably never thought of, but what does nonverbal mean? So here, facial expressions, we use it all the time. It would be impossible for you to communicate without facial, without using facial expressions. Eye contact, this is very common. You hear it all the time. When you talk to someone, you have to give them your eye contact, this and that. But you know, there are so many ways to give people eye contact. And I, I, I often refer to it as eye gaze which means the directions of your eyes, which way you're looking. You know, sometimes when you're thinking, you put your, your head up and you look up. Sometimes you look, you look down. Sometimes you look to the side, you know, things like that. So in, in, in presentation, this counts. This counts, and I, I'll explain why. And um, here we have body posture, body movement, body direction. I'm sure not many people have been taught about these things. Now, when it comes to Body, body movement, there's postural movement, which is, you know, position, direction, say um, postural movement. This is your torso. This is your posture, okay? While this is your gesture. Your hands are your gesture. That's why it's called hand gesture, okay? So there's postural movement, which is position, how you position your posture and direction, which way you turn. And there's gestural movement. is the movement of the hands, of the head, of the arms and sometimes of the leg, okay? So these are all very important when you present and you will see why. Now, let me just give you common challenges in communication and presentation. First of all, nervousness. I think everybody goes through that. It takes a while to calm down, yeah? So if you can control your nerves, I mean, the quicker you can, the better it is because people don't want to be sitting there seeing a nervous person speaking for too long, okay? So nervousness is very important, happens to everyone. Fear of being judged. This is so common. <laughs> this is so common. It would be very strange for anyone to be talking in front of anyone and not be wondering, what do they think of me, okay? And then there's language barrier. Of course, if you're, you know, if you're not fluent, let's say, for example, if you're not fluent in English, and to have to conduct classes in English or presentation in English, it would be it would be you know quite challenging. So language barrier plays a very big role as well. Then there's content. How good are you with your content? How much do you know about your content is very important. Then there's hand movement. Some people use too much hand gesture. They move their hands all the time. Not only all the time, their hands can be asymmetrical um we we have very little time so i'm not going to get into that because it would take like half a day to go into hand gesture but i'll just give you an overview and then there are people who are not sure what to do or where to put their hands so they're always talking with their hands up like this or sometimes the hands are always like this in front of them while they're speaking 
this is what we work on. You know, we work on removing, <laughs> removing barrier or removing challenges when people present. And then people often not think too much about body movement <clears throat> or sometimes not at all. But it is very important because without movement, you can be rigid, extremely rigid and be, be just um, one plane. Using one plane meaning people only see you from the front. They don't see your sides. They don't see you making any turns. So you have to sit right in front of the person to be able to, to see the person because people from the sides will not be able to see them or they will just see them in, uh, you know, in one plane only, one dimension only. Okay. And then too much movement. Some people are so nervous, they cannot control themselves and they move around so much. So when you are presenting <clears throat> or when you you're speaking in front of people, when you move around too much, it takes away the essence of, of the message that you're trying to send because people tend to be looking at you and how you move. You, you understand what I mean? Does everyone mm -hmm. understand what I mean? <laughs> okay, right. Now, speaking with the audience in mind, this is, this is what I always remind my senior executives. It is very important to you, for you to think of the audience Every time you're about to do a presentation or public speaking, or even if you're about to be interviewed, it's very important that you think about the audience. And so with the audience in mind, me personally, this is what I think about. The first thing I think about is first impression management, which means who am I speaking to? Who are these people I'm going to be talking to? Why do I want to know that? Because I want to know what I'm going to wear. It's very important. And I'll show you a couple of pictures, okay? Who am I speaking to dictates what I'm going to wear. It would be, it would be um, very strange if you don't consider these two things. Because first of all, you want to right away be able to connect with your audience. And let's say... There are certain times I've been invited to talk to um, uh, business owners or young entrepreneurs. And there are times when I'm invited to the government, you know, um, yeah, to, to speak to the Royal Thai Army, for example. I certainly cannot wear the same type of clothes. It's impossible. OK, so who am I speaking to dictates what I'm going to wear and how I want to come across to them. I will explain this in a bit. And then, how am I going to connect with my audience and get my message across? That is so important because it doesn't matter what I wear. If I cannot, con uh, if I cannot connect with them, I can't get my message across. It will be impossible. So this is what I think about every time. And lastly, what is my message? What is my message? How am I going to send my message? So here, first impression management, I give you some examples. This was me talking at the United Nations. Um, this forum was for, I think, 160 delegates from all over the world. You can see behind me, there's a, like a counter behind me. That's actually a raised kind of stage. I was supposed to stand there, but I decided not to because it's too, it, it puts me too far away from my audience. Why do I care? Number one, I care because it's an afternoon session and my, my audience, you know, uh, all the participants are from all over the world, 160 of them, which means in the afternoon, not even afternoon, in the morning, you know, some people could be jet lag, jet lag. In the afternoon, it's even worse. So I want to make sure they stay up and listen to me. I don't want to be talking to a bunch of, you know, people who've fallen asleep. So I decided that I was going to stand closer to them. So I did not use the stage. You can see here that I'm right in the middle. And there are three rows of participants. So number one, I think of where I'm going to be, not only what I'm going to wear, where am I going to be in order to connect, to be able to connect with my audience? with the people I'm talking to. 
Now, if you look at what I'm wearing, I hardly, you, if you follow my Facebook page, I hardly wear long sleeves and I hardly wear a jacket. And I did in this occasion because the United Nations color is blue, but I don't have anything blue, light blue, actually, as you can see on the, you know, the, the, the strap on my collar, which is, um, you know, my name tag. So I didn't have anything blue. So I decided the most common color is black. But I didn't want to wear plain black, so I wore black with a little bit of yellow. So I'm not, you know, I'm not, excuse my English, um, kissing their eyes by wearing, you know, their color. But at the same time, I decided to choose the kind of color that everybody can relate with. And our royal families, uh, the color of our royal family is yellow. So I wear black and yellow. And like I said, I stand right in the middle. I'm able to connect with all of them. Otherwise, it will be like me here and you over there. I don't want that kind of relationship with me and my audience ever. So there are times when I would, you know, I'd be invited to speak somewhere and there would be a stage and a podium. I would say, I would tell them to get rid of it, that I'm not going to be standing there, that I want to be with everyone. So this is, this is what you do when you want to connect with your audience. The closer you are, the better. Okay. Now, here's another one. This was at the Royal Thai Army. So you can see I'm wearing something totally different because uh, with government officials, there is a dress code, not that they told me you know, what to wear, but you have to know where you're going, who you're going to be speaking to and how you want to come across. Like I said, you know, I was supposed to be there to teach them something. I wanted to come across not as a friend, but as an instructor. So that's me there. And then here, there's this program that I get invited. Uh, this year was my second year. It's called Wolf Program. And um, they work with um, young entrepreneurs. And you can see them here. So that's, you know, my, my, my dress code is different. different. So, so these are the these things, are like I said, you do um, consider before, you know, you turn up for your, for your talk. And this is my last one. This is for La Prairie, um, which is um, skincare, high-end skincare. So I was training um, their team. And you can see, again, I'm wearing something totally different. The environment is different. I'm wearing something different. I want to be able to connect with them. So I'm so close to them. That's one of the things you need. To, you really need to think about is how close or far away you're going to be from them. The further away, the harder it is to connect unless you are really, really good at public speaking, okay? Now, connecting with your audience. There are a couple of things you can do to connect with your audience. Number one, of course, is eye contact. But what do you do when you have like a <laughs> hundred and something people sitting in the room? I mean, who do you look at? People always ask me this. Do they start by looking at someone, just one person first, and then later start looking at other people? I say if you get nervous easily and you want to calm yourself down, that's the best way to do it is look at someone because the minute you look at someone, you smile and you start talking, you would notice that they start nodding. Then you start feeling better. So when you feel better, then you can look at other people. Never just spend the whole time looking at just one person. Always start with one person and then when you're, when you're comfortable, then start looking at other people. And you will see that the minute you look at them, they will stop whatever they're doing to just pay attention to you. So you have to, you have to be brave enough to look at your audience too. And not just, you know, some people are looking, I don't know where, and just continue with their message or, you know, with, with their script because they want to get it over with. Then there's no connection. There is no connection between you and your audience. So in order to connect with your audience, you have to look at them. You have to, your body positioning, as you see in these four images, you can see body positioning means the movement of the upper body. Where does the person turn? You can see he's actually addressing someone. In every picture, you can see that. The top picture, the top picture, you can see, you know, he's leaning forward, addressing someone. The second on the right, on the top, on the right picture, he's talking to someone because it would be very hard to make all these gestures when you're not focusing on anyone. So my advice is if you want to connect with your audience quickly, first of all, 
give them eye contact. Doesn't matter where you're standing because eye contact is connection from a distance. Just like me connecting to you, I'm looking right at you because I'm looking through the camera. I'm connecting with you. I'm not just sitting here reading my script with my head down. I don't do that in my classes at all. Okay, so number one, eye contact. Number two, body positioning. How you turn your body depends on which direction your, um, you know, how spread out um, your audience is and which direction you want to focus. So these are the type of things you really need to learn. Doesn't come naturally. I mean, it'll be, you know, it'll be, it'll be great if it's natural, but, you know, most people have to learn this. It's a skill. Okay. And then reach. Can you guess what reach is? Does anybody know what reach mean? Everybody knows what it means, but I don't uh, specifically know what reach is. Okay. I were you able to hear that, Alyssa? No, it's there's okay. this huge okay. echo. Okay. So I'll repeat the question. Um, the student asked uh, if you could just, uh, on one hand, he understands reach, but in this context, uh, some clarification would be helpful. Okay, thank you. That That's a very good question. Everybody understands the word reach. You're reaching out to something to get something, um, to grab something. Reach also applies to presentation skills, which means which means reaching out to your audience. And you can see what the guy in all four images is doing. He's reaching. He's using his hand gesture to reach to his audience. Imagine someone just standing there with their arms down, talking to you for like, you know, not even two minutes. You'd be so bored. But let's say someone's making that presentation and that's all they do. They just stand there, one plane, one dimension with their arms, arms down. down. There's no reach. So when you watch people like Obama, which I have a, a, a short clip of him, Obama, or good, you know, world um, guest, uh, world class speakers, you will see they use two things, three things, sorry, eye contact, very good eye contact, body positioning, you know, as in these four images, and reach, a lot of reach, a lot of hand gestures. You will never see them standing there talking without reach. And reach is, what do you think? I'm talking to you. You know, this is what reach means. Okay? Right. Now, the message. I'm going to show you this video of mine. This was in uh, Heidelberg, Germany. I was um, conducting class. Let's see if you can understand what I was trying to tell um, my students to do. I want to thank you for having me here. Can you hear it now, Michael? We can hear it. Okay, good. Yes. I'll start from the beginning. Go. Okay. First of all, I want to thank you for having me here. Um, I think it's it's a great opportunity to work with all of you. I want to thank you for doing your homework. I want to thank you for allowing me to take you to where you've never been. I think movement and communication is very important. I think a lot of people realize that communication is, is, is important, but they don't realize what movement does to communication. So the fact that I think not many people get to see themselves when they present, um, that can be a challenge because they don't know which direction they go when they're talking. They don't know what they do when they're talking. They don't know what they do to cause the reaction they're causing um, in that audience. So I think it's good to know. I think it's good to study your movement, understand what you normally do and what you should stop doing and what you should learn to do. For example, some people don't understand how to use their hands and they tend to go, you know, slashing, cutting, pointing and all that all the time. Whereas remember I, I told you that in movement, beautiful movements are half circles and circles. So basically when you're presenting, when you're talking to people, when you're giving a speech, your movement has to be in sync with what you're saying. And there are such things called graceful movements where people look for and they can connect with. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. Let me just um, put my ear pieces back in. Okay. <clears throat> 
Okay. Can you hear me again now? You sure can. Okay. So what was my message in that clip, in that short clip? What, what I think we could hear was that um, self-awareness when presenting mm -hmm. and being aware of how you are reaching the audience. And it mm -hmm. kind of, and, and what came up for me uh, as a teacher and trainer here at Da Nang University of Economics is that I videotape every presentation, group presentations, individual presentations. I make them available to the students, yes? And I encourage them to watch, look at their, listen to their voice. How are they making eye contact? How are their hand gestures? And that's really been an effective tool because the video does not lie. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult for us to look at ourselves on video, but it tells us a lot of truths about where we're at and also with self-awareness where we can go to go to the next level. Mm. Mm. That, that is so true. I tell my students the same thing. Watch your videos. A lot of people don't want to see themselves presenting. And they just said, oh, we don't want to watch it and all that. I said, only if you watch your videos would you be able to tell, you know, why people were not interested or how well, you know, you, you managed to send out your message or how well you were able to connect with your audience. And you learn from watching your videos. But... When people come to my class, you know, senior executives, when they come to class, the whole day is about me recording them doing that presentation. So I would, you know, after a two day class, they would have at least 10 videos of themselves and they would be able to see how they went from, you know, being so rigid to moving and then to moving, you know, a more struck, more with more structure. And, um, you know, hand gestures, the last thing we teach them because it's very, very um, difficult to teach someone to change the way they use their hands. And so we leave that to last. But back to this video, basically what I was trying to, to, to show you was that without movement, you're not sending any message. And the way you send your message across to your audience depends on you, how quickly you want to send it, how slowly you want to send it. Where is that Point where you 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 want to emphasize. Some people go right into it, and you know they they go at the same pace. And you can see in this video that I had moved from the desk where I was in the beginning to the front, but I did it very slowly. Even I didn't realize it, and I was weight shifting rather than just walking. So you know these are the type of things I. Um, teach and these are the type of things I practice when I you know do my talk to people so okay let's just go here the message and the body movement you can see here you know it's it's like I said you know this this little image here shows me I don't know about you shows me you know two things Number one, I can see obviously the rotation of his upper body because he's not facing you, but he's sort of slightly, you know, turned his side at you. And he's reaching to you as if he's telling you something or asking you something. So without the movement, there is no message. You know what I mean, right? You're just standing there talking, you know, the person listening to you think, oh, okay, I can just, you know, I can just be gossiping or I can just be on my phone texting. I can do whatever. He's not talking to me. So that is why movement is very important. And here in this other picture, it's the same. He goes even further out reaching to whoever he's talking to. You know, when, when, um, when we want to work on something, there's physical effort and mental effort. Physical effort is, you know, um, using physical effort to get things done. And there's mental effort effort which is planning these two images that's what it's about it's using both it's using the physical effort to get it done and the paper paper in his hands you can see that's something mental that is planning so he has something that a script and he's using his physical effort to get it to you to get the message to you so if you're just standing there then you really have no plan because you're just rehearsing what you're going to say trying to remember what you're about to, to say. 
So, you know, you got to, you, your body and your mind have got to work together. 